tells him there, and I'm going to give you a son. Abraham laughed. Fell on his face and laughed. And said, now watch what he said. Uh, Shall I who am old? That's the challenge. He's looking at his age. And he's looking at what God promised. He's looking at his age. He said, I'm old. Should I have a child now? In my old age and my wife being old also? Both of us are old. Amen. We can't do this. All right. So now, amen, God, God promises and tells him that, that, that you're going to have a child that's going to come from your lawns. Amen. Thank God. And, 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 and you're going to name him Isaac. And he's going to come from, from, from Sarah. All right. Amen. He says, amen, that you gonna, you, you, you gonna, I have made this the way the scripture reads. I have made thee a father of many nations. That's in the now. So your faith is now, right? Amen. He didn't say, I'm making you. Or I'm going to make you. He said, I have. I have made you a father of many nations. Amen. I said this on Sunday. Amen. He said many and he didn't have any. Amen. But he, he, he see what Abraham don't see. But he changes his name so that every time somebody called his name, it would be a confession and a testimony that he is the father of many nations. Every time they call his name, every time we call his name, we say, Abraham, the father of many nations. You can't call his name without saying who he really is. All right? Amen. Abraham, but we talk about him a lot. Abraham, oh, he's the father of many nations. Amen? Thank God. So, so, so God gave him that so that, amen, it would encourage and strengthen his faith. Amen. Thank God. The weak places that was in his faith. Then when you get over into chapter 22 of Genesis, where he's on Mount Moriah, amen, God has allowed him to be tested. There the last and final test is when he offers up Isaac. God says to him, Abraham, take your son, your only son, and take him up on the mount that I'm going to show you. And I want you to offer him up as a burnt offering. Abraham takes Isaac without question and his servants and go to the mountain. And he offers Isaac on the altar. And God says this, when he offers him on the altar and God stops him from killing Isaac, God says, now I know. Now I know that you got enough confidence in me that you won't hold anything back. Because when you read in Hebrews chapter 11, amen, the Bible said Abraham believed that even if he slew Isaac, God would raise him up. Amen. Thank God. That was his faith. All right. That was his faith. He believed that, that if God slew him, God would raise him up. All right, let's go, Sister Wendy. As it is written. As it is written. I have made thee a father. I have made thee a father. Of many nations. Of many nations. Before him. Before him. Whom he believed. Whom he believed. Even God. Mm -hmm. Who quickeneth the dead. Okay. And calleth those things which be not. God who calleth those things who be not. As though they were. He just did that with Abraham, right? Amen. He spoke in the present. But when he spoke, it released faith in what gay man, God said he had made him. Now, amen, what has to happen is that it has to be seen, manifest, all right? Amen. God called it as though it's already done. It, amen. It's out there in the future. Why is it necessary, amen, for faith to operate that we have to say something? Amen. We have to talk. You got faith will not work if we don't speak. All right? Amen. You, I, you must speak. Believing without confession is not a release. You only release your faith when you speak your confession. All right? Amen. Thank God. Amen. Faith, amen, come by hearing and hearing the word of God, but faith can only be released and work when we open our mouth. The Bible said the word of faith, which is in our mouth. 
we now confess. If I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. All right? Amen. That's not just for salvation. That's for whatever you believe in God for. Because when you open your mouth, you release into the atmosphere. All right? Amen. You, you release your voice of confession in the atmosphere. Amen? Thank God. Your confession of faith. Amen. Saying that I agree with God. Amen. I'm in agreement with what God says. Amen. Based on the will of God, whatever God says, I believe it. All right? Amen. Thank God. So that's what my confession of faith, the confession of faith is simply believing in the supernatural power of God, being in agreement with God, with what God has spoken, amen, concerning our life. Amen. That's all it is. So I'm confessing that I'm believing God. All right. So here's, here's, here's the point. When I get through praying, amen, when I get through praying about a situation that I want to see changed, okay, amen, thank God, I want to see it changed, so I've been praying about it, now what I need to do is I need to start confessing, amen. Mark chapter 11 in verse 23 and 24 says that when we pray, we have to believe that we receive. Right? Amen. We have to believe that we receive what we're praying for. If I can't believe that I received it, I'll never get it. Okay? All right. So, so my faith, amen, is that I must believe that I receive. And if I believe that, he said, whatsoever I say, I got to believe it. I have to confess it. So now I'm not only praying, but I got a confession. Amen. You confess faith every day. Amen. Some of y'all are going to do it before you leave here tonight because you're going to tell somebody I'm going home. Amen. You do it every day. It's a common thing. Amen. Thank God. I'm going home. Amen. Thank God. All right. Amen. So, but you can't just say it. It starts here. But it takes you there. Amen. Thank God. But it is you, you, God has wired us that we would confess so that we can release, oh God, we can release the movement of our faith. All right? Why do you think just about everything you do, you say it before you do it? Your housewife, you say, I'm going to this kitchen to put some bread on. Yeah, I'm serious. Amen. Just about whatever you're going to do, before you actually do it, you make a confession. Amen. Let me get up here and get dressed. Ain't nobody there but you. You tell your own self. Amen. You can, because that's how God wired us. And what that does is it releases faith. <laughs> it releases faith and you, you, your response is you get up and you start moving. But you didn't move until you released your faith. Bless your father. <sighs> okay. Wow. Okay, let's go to the swing. Who against hope. Now notice. Who against hope. Believed in hope. Believed. Who against hope. Who didn't have no hope. Believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. Right. So shall thy seed be. Now, now here's the challenge. Abraham, when the Bible says that he hoped against hope. All right. Amen. He didn't see no way that this was going to happen. The hope he had to, to forsake. Or stop looking at his own condition. He had to stop looking at his own circumstances. And he had to focus on what God said. That's where his hope was. He had no hope in his own self. 
So it was against hope. The hope of faith was against the natural law of his body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. Against hope. He had to count, amen, himself and see himself as God see him. All right, let's read. Watch this. And being not weak in faith. And now, I told you about this earlier. Being not what? Weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. There you go. That's where the hope come from. Notice what it said. Being not what? Weak in faith. Weak in faith. Now, to not be weak in faith means that I got I to gotta look beyond what's really happening. I, I got to take God at his word. Amen. I got to take God at his word. I, I know it's out of my hands. Amen. I know there's not anything that natural that I can do about it. I done exhausted all my means. Everything that I was going to do, I've already tried it and it's not working. So he says now, amen, thank God, he considered not his own body. His body is the circumstances. Now dead. Oh, my Lord. He considered not his own body now dead. His body dead. Mm -mm. It's dead. Amen. It's useless as far as he's concerned. But he didn't consider that. He's saying even with a dead body, what God has spoken, he able to bring it to pass. So I'm not going to consider myself... Well, other words, what he said, hey, this is out of my hands. This is not about me anymore. This is about what I believe about God. If I can believe God, all right, he considered not his body, now dead, that's one, when he was about a hundred years old. He's about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness. Now, if you notice, when God was talking to Abraham back in Genesis, Every time God told Abraham that he was going to have this child, you know what Abraham said? I'm too old. God saying one thing, he's saying something totally different. God talking about what's happening, he talking about his age. God never asked him, Abraham, how old are you? He never asked him. He just told him what he wanted to do if he would believe him, right? Amen. So, so what we what do we learn from that is that we don't bring up the circumstances to God. Amen. God said, "I'm your deliverer." I don't I don't come with, but God, you don't know how long I've been in this. God, you don't know how tough this is. God, you don't know how I've wrestled with. You don't come to God with that. You don't consider that. You only need to consider what God said. All right. Amen. All right. Let's go. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now he said, I'm old, I'm dead, and Sarah's womb is dead. Amen. Bible said, had ceased to be with her after manner of women. Amen. Thank God. Now, now, he said, I'm dead. Her womb is dead, which is really saying she dead. All right? Both of us dead. Amen. We, we, we ain't got nothing to offer. But now the Bible makes the statement that he being not weak in faith. Read. He considered not his own body. He considered not his own body. Now dead. Now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Yeah. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Mm -hmm. He staggered not. He staggered not. At the promise of God. At the promise of God. Through unbelief. Through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Unbelief will cause us to stagger, right? right. Amen. He staggered. He stumbled not. Through unbelief at the promise of God, but what? But was strong in faith. But was strong in faith. Lord, strengthen my faith. The Bible says this about Sarah when, when, when God changed her name. He, 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 for the same reason he changed Abraham's name. But he says about her in the Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says, through faith, Sarah also herself. Receives strength, not more faith. She receives strength, amen, in her old age to bring forth a child. Amen. Thank God. What we need as believers is not more. We need stronger. 
Amen? Thank God. Amen. Because it, does, it doesn't matter about how much I have, how big it is, if, it, if it's not strong. Amen? Thank God. It, it, the, the walls in this building, amen, thank God, if, if these walls are weak, we could knock this end out over here and expand this building all the way up to the other building. But when we, after we make it all, and all that increase, the building going to still be weak. It's big, but if we didn't do anything with the walls, the same weakness that was there is still there. Because bigger doesn't mean stronger. But if we come back and reinforce the walls, amen, then we're getting somewhere. Our thing has always been, I need more because more is always better. But not so. Jesus says, amen, thank God, that if I have faith as a mustard seed. Now, what's, what, I, what, what really confused me at one time when I first started looking at this was the fact that he tells me that all I need is mustard seed faith. And then I see him, in a sense, congratulating a woman and saying to her, great is your faith. I'm saying, how does this relate to my mustard seed in her greatness? Amen? How, if, 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 if mustard seed, if you're telling me that that's all I need, why are you complimenting her about her great faith? Amen. Thank God. It was not the size of her faith. It was the strength because of the persistence that she had. When you read in Matthew chapter 15, this woman just would not quit. Amen. She would not quit. She came after him and she followed him. She bugged the disciples. Amen. Till they said, Master, in, in so many words, if you're not going to do what she says, send her away. We're tired of her. Amen. We're tired of her. She bothering us. But she just kept right on. She kept right on. She kept right on. She kept right on. She would not be deterred no matter what. Amen. Thank God. And even when Jesus was talking to them, he was talking over her. Amen. He says, not me to take the children and bread and give to the dog. She jumps into conversation and says, that's true, Lord. But the dogs to take the crumbs and fall from the table. Amen. Thank God. Amen. So then he says to the old woman, great is thy faith. It wasn't how much big her faith was. It was the strength of it that kept her perseverance. Amen. That's where we come in. Amen. Where sometimes we are lacking is because our faith needs strength. Amen. And we're asking for more. And God says you need strength. And we're asking for more. Increase my faith. If I had more, I could do more. Amen. Thank God. If my faith were bigger, but God says this, it really makes a lot of sense naturally because my faith is to be in God, right? Amen. My faith is in God. So the power, amen, that's going to get the job done is not really in my faith. It's in the object that I place my faith. All right? Amen. Thank God. It's the object. So if God is the object, it doesn't matter about how big my faith is. If my faith is strong in the object, oh God, I thank you. Hallelujah. If I have the utmost confidence in the object, that the object will hold whatever I lay on it, Thank God. Then I have the assurance. I don't mind other folk boasting about how much they got. Amen. But the object of my faith, that's where I'm going to place it. That's why in Mark 11, 22, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, the disciples was amazed. Amen. Thank God. They were just blown away with the fact that he cursed the fig tree and the next day the fig tree was withered away. Amen. They said, oh, master, that tree you cursed yesterday is done withered away. Jesus simply said to them, have faith in God. Put your faith in God. Never mind the tree. Amen. Put your faith in God. 
If you put your faith, if your faith is in God, then your faith is a pure faith. You can tell the mountain to move. And he said, if you don't doubt in your heart, amen, thank God, but believe the things that you say, you shall have whatsoever you say, right? Amen. Thank God. So, so he said, you have faith in God. My faith must be in God. So I say to the church, amen, don't, 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 no longer look at how big you think your faith need to be. Amen. Mustard seed sized faith can move any mountain that's in your life. Amen. Any obstacle that's in your life, any circumstance that's in your life, mustard seed faith can move it. All we need to do is make sure that that mustard seed faith is strengthened. All right? Amen. That God, I'm placing it, amen, in God. God becomes the foundation of where my faith lies. And therefore, since my faith is the foundation that holds everything up and God is holding me, holding me up through my faith, I can trust God with mustard seed faith that will root up a sycamore tree, that will root a mountain. Amen. It'll do all of that. With that little bitty mustard seed faith. God is so great. He don't need a lot. Amen. God doesn't need a lot. Amen. God deals with small things. He took two fish and five bodily loaves and fed 5,000, not counting women and children, with two fish and five loaves. He don't need a lot. Amen. No, no, no. He doesn't have to have a lot. Amen. Thank God. He took water and made wine. He don't need a lot. Amen. Thank God. He deals with small things. But when God gets in it, it becomes powerful. Amen. He tried to show this to the disciples in Luke chapter 8. Mark chapter 4, Matthew chapter 9. He tried to show them this when the storm. You remember this is the story of Crim Cross in the Sea of Galilee and the storm come down on the waters. Remember that story? Amen. Thank God. Storm comes down on the water. Amen. And they are wrestling with the ship. He's down in the bottom of the hull of the ship sleep. And the waves are beating in as though the ship is about to sink. They wake him up. Amen. They wake him up and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And the Bible said he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. And that was a great calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? Where's your faith? He didn't say he didn't have it. He said, where is it? Where have you placed it? Amen. They placed it in themselves. And when they could not bring the ship under control was when they thought about Jesus. The curious thing about that is that at least three of those fellows on that ship were seamen. They understood the sea. Yeah, they were seamen. They were fishermen. Amen. They had the skill. Amen. But they couldn't bring the ship under control. Jesus, here's the lesson. Jesus is saying to them when he said, where is your faith? It's kind of like saying, amen, amen. Why did you wake me? Why didn't you just do this? Mark chapter 4 verifies that. Because in Mark chapter 4, amen, he says to them, amen, O oh, ye of little faith, why are you fearful? Again, why didn't you do this? I'm your example. Amen. What I'm doing is what you are supposed to do. Amen. But they woke him up, but it was a lesson. He tells them again in Luke chapter 8, amen, same thing. Over again, 
But what he wants them to do and to understand, amen, is how to use their faith. Now, notice, he didn't walk out on the, the deck of the ship and just look at the storm. He spoke to it. Amen. Didn't anything happen until he spoke. When he spoke, the wind ceased. The waves laid down. And that was a great calm. But it only happened when he spoke. Amen. When he released faith, then the elements got in a line. And the disciples become astonished at what had happened and said, What manner of man is this that he commands the wind and the waves and they obey him? They'd been with him, but there were some things about him they didn't know. And he's manifest. And so when the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight, Amen. It is a compliment to the believer. Let's finish this up, sister. When my time is about up. But was strong in faith. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Now he's praising God. All right. And being fully pers persuaded that. Now he's praising God, being fully persuaded. He don't have Isaac yet. 